At the same time, there was a lot of, I would say, very justifiable concern about uh, all of the candidates who, you know, were election deniers and unwilling to say whether they would have certified Joe Biden's election in, in advance, cast, casting doubt on whether the elections would be free and fair. There's a lot of concern about what those people would do if they lost. By and large, I mean, this is the lowest bar of all time. They all accepted their defeats and uh, eventually conceded Mastriano in Pennsylvania. I was going to say. Even Doug Even Mastriano. Even Doug Mastriano. Yeah. He initially didn't, I guess, call Shapiro and didn't outright say yes. that he would concede. But then he finally, I guess, five days later got around to actually doing it. So, again, mm -hmm. lowest bar of all time. Thing. But he managed <laughs> to uh, surpass it. There are a couple hold downs, though. Uh, Blake Masters, let's go ahead and put this up on the screen. He has, uh, as of last night, declined to concede at Arizona. He says he wants to wait until all the votes are counted. And, you know, he's got some language in here. He says, uh, if at the end Senator Kelly has more of the votes than I do, I will congr congratulate him on a hard-fought victory. But voters decide, not the media. Let's count the votes. Um, he also said, for my people who knocked doors in the 115-degree heat and for the million-plus Arizonans who put their faith in me, we are going to make sure that every legal vote is counted. So has not quite... Uh, brought himself to concede yet. Yeah, I mean, look, you can wait if you want. I mean, personally, I just think it makes you look like even more of a loser. Like, at this point, it's very clear, like, you're not going to win. Uh, that's why, look, it's we're not talking here about decision desk or something calling it. The AP has gone ahead and called the race. All of the Arizona data guru people that I see people following, all of them have pointed to the fact seen that they're anyone right. casting doubt There on is this no one. chance. And by the way, we're not sitting here saying that Carrie Leak is lost yet for a reason, which is that she still has a possibility. It's a slight possibility. So if she doesn't want to concede, I completely understand that one. But on his, it's very clear like he does not have the votes. There's no outstanding number of batches which could possibly really break that way in any realistic fashion. So look, I mean, if you want to hold out for another week, I guess go ahead. Not really a headline, you know, that I would necessarily want given that, you know, now you have to go back into private practice. <laughs> So it's True. not like, you know, True. now you actually have to go back into <laughs> private practice and work in a business and, you know, potentially do deals with major companies and be a venture capitalist. It's like, that's where I think reputation, as I'm going to be talking about in my monologue, I would say matters a little bit. I mean, look, in general, with the guy, dug himself on massive holes, went way too hard in the paint during the primary in order to try and score the Trump endorsement, you know, the clownish, I think Trump won uh, ad, then of right. course the national abortion ban. And a lot of his ads have been circulating online to just show how frankly cringe he was He's throughout the entire just, process. In terms of like, personal qualities yeah. an off-putting like dude yeah i just don't think i just don't think he was a natural politician period yeah. and i think there a lot a, of his decisions underscored that right there was yeah. a uh mcconnell's i think lead pollster said that blake masters tested the worst in front of focus groups of any candidate that they had literally ever seen right. so even putting aside like national abortion ban and calling abortion genocide and the like trump actually won 2020 and whatever just on like you know that natural like that instinctive vibe you get off of someone. We didn't focus as much on Masters as like, say, Walker or Oz. Mm -hmm. There's an argument he was actually a worse candidate than certainly Walker, who at least is still in the ball game. All right, well, I mean, you, all you have to do is take a look at the vote. Of course you have to do vis-a-vis. -vis. I mean, right now he's blaming Mitch McConnell and the cash. I mean, I guess there is an argument to be made for that, but it's also like, well, why weren't you raising more money? You know, <laughs> like right. why are you lazing on, why were you relying on Mitch McConnell to right. go ahead and raise? I mean, uh, look, uh, looking at the race, it's very clear that many of the things we were saying, uh, what, a couple of months ago uh, from the Kansas referendums, from the polls and more, and from Mark Kelly's strength as a candidate actually all bared out to be true. The fundamentals didn't end up mattering nearly as much in this election. And I think that's very interesting from uh, in terms of takeaways. Like I have very, very multifaceted takeaways there, from all of this. You can't help yeah. but have multifaceted takeaways yeah. because as we showed you on that map before, I mean, look, it, no doubt, much better night for Democrats than mm -hmm. Republicans. I mean, compared to how the party in power normally does, it was actually a historic night for Democrats. Um, but you look at Florida, you right. look at New York, you look at, you know, some places Democrats really romped, like in the industrial Midwest and some places like Arizona, they really had to sort of like you know, eke it out. California, same deal. So it, it there was a lot of regional variability. There was a lot of state-to-state -state variability. It really was almost 
the return of more local politics mm -hmm. that we haven't seen, certainly since the Trump era. So there is going to continue to be a lot of takeaways from exactly how all of these races went. We've mentioned Carrie Lake now a couple of times. Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen because she's the other one. Big questions over whether or not she's going to concede. And that question mark if is she loses. Yeah. still very much there. Right. Um, Katie Hobbs grows lead over Carrie Lake in lead latest returns from Arizona governor's race. Uh, Dave Wasserman over at Cook Political, who's everybody's sort of like go-to data analyst, he says it's it looks nearly impossible for, for Carrie Lake to be able to come back yet. That being said, the uh, race has yet to be called. So, you know, we'll wait to call it for sure. But it is looking very good for the Democrats in Arizona in that gubernatorial race. And, you know, we'll see if Carrie Lake loses, if she is willing to concede. Some of her supporters have been out marching on voting centers and all this sort of stuff. So we'll see how that ultimately goes. But, you know, in terms of, like, how all the election deniers fared, she was the only one who, at the end of the day, really had a shot at the governor's level mm -hmm. to be able to hold on. Um, she was, you know, she was very politically talented in terms of, like, personal charisma, sort of the polar opposite of Blake Masters there. And uh, also had some, you know, she was she was well-funded. She was uh, well-networked in the state and with the political uh, Republican establishment there as well. And so— for Carrie Lake, even, to be on the verge of a loss, it does show you what a political price there was to be paid for refusing to say who actually won the 2020 election. Yeah, here's the other thing. I've seen a lot of people say, like, why does it take so long to count the votes? I agree with you. It's a disgrace. However, uh, it's a longstanding disgrace in the state of Arizona, apparently. Uh, for some reason, and I, I'm curious what you think, they have it such that they don't even start counting the votes until election day itself. Yeah. Also, they have this crazy system where you can do like a day of mail-in drop. So you can come, you can like basically write your mail-in ballot, then you come on election day and you and have drop to drop it off. it off. I guess that's fine, but we got over 100,000 more this time than we did in 2020. Some 276,000 ballots dropped on on day of. Then signature verification has to go through uh, per their laws. It's a very, very like, pr it's a problematic and long process. People can do challenges, all that. Only then can a vote get counted. It's like, well, no wonder it's taking days and days well, in order to count votes the other here. thing I want to say to Republicans yeah. I, I agree. It yeah. should be simpler. Like what, but why does Florida, which has a bunch of old people, well, how can they count their votes in one day? Agree. Yeah. <laughs> but I also want to say for all the Republicans yeah. who are complaining about this, like they're shooting themselves in the foot by encouraging their base to wait until the day of. And, you know, we talked yeah. about this with regard to Georgia and Trump yeah. last time around, which is there is a real argument that if Trump had just embraced early mail-in voting, mm -hmm. he might have won Georgia and might have won the whole darn thing. Because ultimately, listen, you know, not everybody is a, like, ride or die all the way in for the cause going to be able to vote no matter what it takes on election day. Shit happens. People's kids get sick and work goes long and they just forget about, like, whatever. So if you you are banking on having every one of your voters have to show up on election day, that's going to be a wildly more challenging uh, organizational task. It's going to take way more resources, whereas Democrats had a huge advantage in that they had in some of these states, you know, a month where they could turn their people out and check whether they voted or not and nudge them and get them to fill out their ballot or get them to go to the polls or whatever it was. So this direction that Republicans have gone in has really ended up being being uh, just a catastrophic, idiotic mistake. Zero disagreement. I'm like, yeah. listen, I want more voter participation. I think mail-in ballots are fine in general. I mean, everybody's like, oh, we're going to end the ballot harvesting regime. I'm like, well, you just lost the election. So first of all, it's not going to happen. But second, you know, you could just uh, get your people to vote by mail as well. One of the, uh, Here's a practical solution from what I read. There's something called an extrication machine, which Florida has and Arizona doesn't. Mm. It uses a laser to cut off the top of the envelope so that they can more easily extract the oh, ballot. Oh, is that all it is? I am I'm calling on okay. the federal government to purchase <laughs> extrication machines for the use Distribute by the states them of, for everyone so we don't have to live through the shit Let's get ever that again. So Arizona, then. I am pleading with you. You guys have plenty of money. You can buy an extrication machine. Is this the uh, problem in California too? Because they that's always another one. take forever. And usually yeah. no one really cares that much because right. ultimately, you know, it's going to go blue and it's just a question of the margin. But now we have uh, house control coming down to some of these California exactly. districts. And I keep looking at the update and they're like, we've counted. 60% of the ballots. <laughs> like, 
What? It's insanity. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why is it taking so long? Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.